Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, my name's Rich McDonald, and I play David Mason in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek podcast. Uh, hey, everybody. You're listening to Everything Geek podcast. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Hey, it's Leif Ganfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining me today is a very special guest. We have actor Stink Fisher, best known for playing Aaron Helsinger in Gotham, Warren in The Sopranos, Mr. Connors in The Lovely Bones, Danny Franks in Invincible, Daniel Caldhart's Cafeteria Prisoner in The Longest Yard, Muscle Guy in Going the Distance, Construction Worker in Gulliver's Travels, and the Marine in The Blacklist. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, Rory. How are you? Very good, thanks. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So getting right into my questions for you, can you tell us how you got into acting? I, I I come from a very colorful family, and my father was a writer and a director and an actor, and I was a football player, American football. Um, I don't mess with soccer. I'm actually allerg- I'm allergic to it. That black and white colors on the ball, it just does. I, I go into like septic shock. It's really scary. Uh, so I was playing football, but I always in the back of my mind felt like I would fall into acting at some point and writing and stuff like that because it was in my blood. I was around it all my childhood. So I felt that at some point in time, I was going to just make the segue into acting. And my football career was kind of up and down all over the place. I was in the NFL briefly, and then I went and played arena football, and then I was in the CFL in Canada. When I came home from Canada, I was like 27, 28 at this time. It was about 20 years ago. And... I was offered a two-year extension from the Montreal Alouettes, and I came home to think about it, and my current wife at the time, who is now my ex-wife, she was like, I don't want to move to Montreal. And I was like, well, I I know, but like, this is football, and I'm pursuing it, and you know, we went back and forth with it, and around that same time, I got a phone call from a friend of mine that was doing casting for a commercial in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She needed like a real big football guy. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it, sure. And that pretty much was my jump off point into acting. I, I did the commercial. I had an absolute blast. I loved being on set. I loved being around the crew and the other cast. And I just, I wrote her, this is how long ago this was. I wrote her a letter and I sent her a fax. There was like, I don't even think I had email back then. I'm, I don't know. And I sent her a fax and I thanked her up and down. I said, listen, I had a great time. If you ever want to use me again, um, I would be more than happy to go out on you know anything and, and just keep throwing my hat in the ring. And she kept my head, my number and my name, and she just kept sending me out on different projects that were coming around. And I kept getting lucky and, and booking work. So I eventually just said, like, I'm, I think I'm going to do this. I think I want to go for it. So that's how it happened. It was just kind of like right place, right time. That's very cool. And it, that's like the handy thing as well of having the contacts, like – if you weren't friends with that person, you wouldn't have like got the original commercial, and then you know kept going up in the acting world. No, you're, you're absolutely right, and and this business is so based on relationships. It's based on a little bit of what you know, a lot of who you know, and then you have to have some talent. I don't know if I have talent, but I have a lot of luck. So get lucky once in a while. Luck is very good as well. So, but. <laughs> Um, but I have to I have to say though when you mention the whole soccer thing I'm just like imagine if he gets cast in like a soccer film that they're shooting in the states or something 
I don't know, not many of those exist, but just, no, I, just I, if I they don't. And I don't think that I'd be portraying Pele anytime soon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's not exactly. my only reference. He's my only – bend it like Beckham, right? So Beckham, I know Beckham and I know Pele. Those are like two soccer players that I know. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you're not a soccer fan because that is not how you say his name. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's Pele. Pele, okay, there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't mean to correct you, of course, but uh, – okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, can you tell me how you were originally cast as Aaron Helsinger in Gotham? Yeah, the, the Gotham casting process was bizarre. Um, I I get called in for multiple castings for all kinds of different shows and, and films and stuff like that all the time. And Gotham was one of those shows where they kept bringing me in over and over and over again. And I read for, I remember I read for like a man with a hat. And then I read for um, another another guard type scenario, I guess at Arkham. And uh, honestly, I think I read for six or seven different auditions for different characters. During that period of time, I read for Helsinger. I didn't know it was Helsinger at the time. I just figured it was another audition and didn't get it. Time comes and goes. And my agent calls me up and she says, you know, stink, you have another audition with Gotham. And I said, seriously, I said, I, I'm, I'm so tired of going back and forth with them. I'm like, if they, if they don't want me, just tell them to just leave me alone. And she said, just go in. She's like, it's good for them to see you and all that stuff. So I said, yeah, I'll go in. So I get the sides in my email, and I'm reading the sides, and I'm like, I've read these before. I've read these sides before. So I called my agent and said, are you sure this is an audition for Gotham? Because, like, I already read for this role, like, a year ago. And she said, no, no, I'm, I'm telling you, like, th this is legit. So I go in and I did it one take. I didn't, I mean, I was in character and I did my thing, but I didn't really think anything of it. And I live in New Jersey, but I, I go up to New York for auditions. And I, I come back home like an hour and a half later and my phone rings and it's my agent. And she says, you booked it. You booked Gotham. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, seriously? And she says, no, I'm telling you, you booked Gotham. So that's how the whole process went, and I and I was just and when I got there, I had to go for costume, and this will segue into some other stuff we could talk about about Gotham. But when I got to the costume department, they everyone was like congratulating me, like, "Hey, congratulations, man! You're going to be around here for a while." And I was like, "Really?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, this is a big deal." And I was like, "Oh, all right, cool." So, I it's just it is a great experience, and I'm so thrilled to be part of such an awesome show. I can't tell you. I'm a big, big Batman, Superman geek, and uh, I just, I, to be part of anything in that world was very cool. Yeah, it's really great. Um, it's actually funny that you mentioned that a year before that you read it for the second time, uh, you mentioned that it, like a whole year had passed before you saw those, read for that character all over again. What's actually interesting is in the first season of Gotham, there was a one episode or a two episodes character, I can't remember which it was, that like supposedly was originally intended to be Helsinger, but then they changed the name last minute, but like, and then, so your character obviously ended up Helsinger, but there was a character in the first season that right. might have originally been meant to be, and then they changed it like last minute, so... It is interesting that you mentioned the sides were like exactly the same, but like a year between the two editions. Yeah, absolutely crazy. And that, and that's the world that we, we live in as actors. I mean, that happens probably more frequently than, than we'd like to think, but it's just, it's bizarre. Strange world. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we're, we're, I mean, you mentioned that you were a DC fan and a Batman and Superman fan, but had you seen Gotham at all? Were you a fan of it, the show itself? I, I tend to not watch a lot of TV, um, which is weird because you should to kind of just study shows and see what you're going on. But I kind of just do my own thing and I just go by my own drum and, you know, every once in a while I'll catch an episode, but I'm not really, I'm not like a uh, 100% every night that it's on sitting in front of the TV watching the show. But I did know the show and I had seen a couple episodes of it. And I liked it. I liked how dark it was, and I liked how they were introducing all the characters. And where, and I liked their their jump-off point. I, I liked where they were starting the story from. I thought that was a very cool thing. Yeah. 
that actually does make sense, though, because, like, if you, you know, were a diehard kind of fan of the show and knew it very well, like, you might, even though you're an experienced actor, if, like, you were a really big fan of something, you might, like, overthink it in an addition or try too hard, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a no, good it thing. It does make sense, and that's kind of the reason why I don't watch anything religiously is because I, I'll watch things loosely, especially if I know I have an audition coming up for a show in a week or so and I have time to you know go over my sides and create character and all that I will watch the show I'll watch a few episodes I'll, I'll just find I'll seek them out and I'll, and I'll watch them just to get a feel for the pacing of the show and the way that the characters talk to each other um, that's important that's definitely important but you're you're absolutely right and that's the reason why I don't watch shows religiously is because I kind of feel like I'm in that ballpark already and if I get an opportunity I don't want to overthink it and I don't want to get to the point where I'm trying too hard. I just want it to be natural, and I want to kind of just float right in and kind of just, hey, this guy should have been here all along. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the last time we saw Helsinger, it was in the episode Azrael in the second season when he is knocked unconscious by a recently revived Theo Galavan, meaning his status is currently unknown because we don't know if he was like killed off screen or whether he was just put back in a cell. Do you know anything no. about the status of your character that the fans don't know? I, I, here's, here's what I do know. This is what I do know. I am a legacy character. Aaron Helsinger, who becomes Amidala, is a legacy character. I, I, DC will not allow him to be killed off. Cannot kill him off. So, as far as I know, right now, I am in limbo, sitting in the laboratory where Strange kept me, and at some point in time, they have the ability to bring me into the storyline and let me wreak some havoc. So I'm hoping that that happens. I don't know what their plans are. I know that my agent contacts them or they contact my agent, um, the production office, every once in a while and just kind of check my availability and they check status. And she checks in to see if they're interested in bringing me in for something. But as of right now, I don't know any solid plans. I haven't heard anything. Well, hopefully, like, at some point or another during the future of the show, like, we will see him return, because obviously it's been a while since we've seen him. Yeah, no, and I, but I, th I think that this is the type of show that's kind of cool in the sense that you can bring someone back after a long while. Um, look what they're doing with the Joker, you know, and they're kind of teasing that and all that, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, it's a really cool element to be able to do something like that. And it gives them a lot of flexibility and a lot of range. So it, w it would make sense for them to bring my character back at some point in time just for for the fun of it. Because it would be fun. We had a lot of fun when I was on set. That's Definitely really have fun. Great. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the experience working with the cast and crew of the show? Oh, Roy, I, I got to tell you, man, top-notch people all across the board. From the cast uh, and the crew um, all the way up to the producers and directors that I worked with on the show, the various directors, everybody's just 100% top notch. They're a family. It's teamwork. Uh, I was made to be part of the family. The second I arrived, I felt like I belonged. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you enter a set when it's been going for a while and you're kind of like an outsider and you just feel kind of like, okay, well, you know, I'll just stick to myself and I'll do my thing. And, but I was embraced when I got there, and I felt completely part of the whole process. And uh, I was able to bring myself to the table and allow myself to invent and create, which I loved. I thought that was really cool that there was artistic um, freedom there, and, and creativity was allowed to flourish. Because sometimes you're in a situation where you know it's very set and it's very direct, and this is exactly how we want it, and that's it. But I was allowed to kind of play around. So I, I love great experience, man. Great experience. I would love to go back. Definitely, that's really great. If you're listening. Yeah. My phone here. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> oh, you're just messing with me. <laughs> um, what would you say is your favorite memory from your time working on Gotham? Oh man, favorite memory. Uh. I have so many, we did so many cool, fun things. Uh, I think one of them was when I, when I jumped down on, uh, Gordon off the wall and the, and that little real tight alley, that was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. I mean, I do my own stunts. And like I said, I'm an ex football player. I'm an athlete. 
And my body has taken a pounding over the years with football and then with acting and doing my own stunts. So I am unafraid to do anything. I'll jump out of a helicopter. I'll swim with sharks. I don't, I don't really care because to me, once I'm in character and I have my blinders on, I don't think like, oh, I'm Stink Fisher. I could get hurt. I think like I'm, I'm Aaron Herzlinger. I got to kill this guy. So jumping off that building was pretty cool because it was a really tight spot. Um, there was maybe, I would say, three feet in between the two buildings. And the way we had to have it set up is there were, it was impossible because of camera angle to have padding all over the place. So we actually had people standing outside of the range, the camera, and basically I would jump off the building. We did it a few times too. I would jump off the building and then they would catch me as I hit the mat and make sure that I didn't roll into the walls and stuff like that. It was, it was pretty wild. Uh, that was a really cool memory. And then I had, uh, I, I think one of the coolest memories, and this, this might really resonate with your fan base and yourself, walking on set, walking on set and, and literally walking into the Penguins house on set and seeing the detail and every little bit and piece was, was just fantastically crafted that was really super cool for me i mean i i was like wow like i there were times where i wasn't on camera and i was just like waiting to waiting to go on camera and i would walk around the sound stage and i would just hit all the different sets and just check them out like check out the cave check out penguin's house you know a galavan we did some scenes in galavan's place so i mean i, I was there um it was, it was a really cool experience very very tight show. They do a really good job, and they, and those people care an awful lot about what they're doing. So they make sure that they're putting their best foot forward. Yeah, that's definitely really fantastic. Um, though I don't think you should declare on air that you want to fight a shark because someone will probably <laughs> take you up on that. Hey man, you know if it pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say were the biggest challenges you faced while working on Gotham? Biggest challenges. Um, I, you know, honestly, with with Helsinger, I think the biggest challenge was to find my space in the scene. I don't have a lot of lines. I don't talk a lot. Um, I'm a big, dumb, angry guy. And you know, there were there were some scenes where I would have more lines than others, but most of the time it was just my presence being felt. So. I needed to make sure that I I was part of the scene and not just background. So I would find that I could introduce a lot of myself. I'm very, I look at the world in a very comical way and I use comedy to kind of lace my characters, even if it's a very serious role. I always try to find some type of comedic edge to it or some type of ironic edge to it because that's to me life. And people have layers. So I would find different things to do on set and on camera that actually kept me part of the scene, even though I was quiet and I didn't say anything. Like, if you remember, um, and this is really funny, too, because it, it, people don't necessarily know this unless they're, they're an actor or they're on set and they're doing something in crew or, you know, or somehow or, or another, they'll have that experience. But when you eat food in a scene, they're going to do that scene probably 20 times just on average. So if you're eating something, you have to eat that same thing every single take. And when Gallivan brings us around the table the first morning after he abducts us, we're sitting at the table, and I don't know if you recall, but there was a big pile of donuts that was sitting on the on the table in front of us. And everyone kind of had one in front of them, but no one was really eating them. And I was like, well, shit, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat the donut because that's what Helsinger would do. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm a beast. And I see food, I'm just going to eat it. Like my my whole my whole drive is survival. You know, I sleep, I eat, I kill people. That's it. So I start eating this chocolate donut, and I had and the one guy that kept doing the prop master that kept coming over and replacing the donut take after take. He says to me after like two takes, he goes, "You know, you're going to be eating that donut for a really long time." I said, "Yeah, man, I know." I said, "But they're pretty good donuts." So. I probably ate like six or seven donuts in whole during that whole take. But when Helsinger, when um, 
Galavan goes around the table and he's having everybody say like, uh, you know, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, I think it was or something like that. And uh, he gets to me. I don't have any lines, but I made sure that I had a big giant mouthful of chocolate icing and, and donut all over my face. And I just look up at him kind of like, and he's just like, ah, never mind. And he moves on. But it was a nice little comedic moment. So that those were the challenges were to find those moments where I could put a little bit of that in there. So. Yeah, that's really cool. It's a really interesting story. Um, uh, was the prop master ever unhappy about the missing donuts? No, you know, um, it, 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 no, not really. But it did become it becomes laborious after a while. I mean, it really does. It's 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 a chore to have to replace stuff. And you know, there was uh, one scene. I, everyone, anyone that sees me and recognizes me, is like, I want my ice cream from that one scene with uh, the penguin. And uh, that was a pain in the ass. That was a total pain in the ass. And it was, he wasn't getting aggravated, but at one point, and the take didn't make it, which I thought it should have because it was great because the guards hold me back and I'm like reaching for it. And I'm like, I want my ice cream. And at one take, I, I forced it to where I got to the ice cream and I actually grabbed it. And I'm like, it's chocolate. It's chocolate. And I, and it was off script, but it was, everyone was laughing their asses off. It was hilarious, but they didn't use that take. And the prop master, I mean, it was chocolate ice cream was everywhere. It was everywhere. It was on the floor. It was on the table. It was all over me. It was, it was an absolute mess. So it was like, I, after that, it was like, Hey, stink, just, um, just restrain and scream for the ice cream. Don't grab it. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you. So that was like the nice way of saying like, dude, don't touch the ice cream. Please don't touch the ice cream. So that was a moment, yeah, where, where they were pretty much like, don't don't do that. They sh they should have used that take. Like I can just picture it in the episode now, and I mean it was a funny scene, obviously, but I think that would have made it even funnier. But oh. I could be biased. I like chocolate ice cream, so. Oh, I do too. But I I thought it was really funny too because it's like I get that I get that answer you know i'm like what flavor is it what flavor is it? and then i grab it and i'm like it's chocolate i thought it was i thought it was hilarious but uh you know for whatever purpose they didn't use it maybe it was just it didn't work for the scene or they didn't want to keep reshooting with me grabbing ice cream was probably the biggest reason why they didn't want to do that yeah probably <laughs> which would you say has been the most challenging role in your career so far Whew. Challenging role. Um, I think all of them are challenging in one one way or another uh, because, I, like I said, people have layers and characters have layers, and and I think that all the characters that I've been able to portray have had dimensions to them, um, albeit some are smaller than others. Um, but the challenge is always with the the lesser lines. So uh, because. Verbally, that's how we express ourselves most of the time. And that's what people connect to, is language. Um, in fact, I just I just watched Shape of Water. Did you happen to catch that yet, Shape of, The Shape of Water? No, unfortunately. It's, it's um, a great, great film. It's beautifully done, absolutely beautifully done. It, it is so visually stunning. I can't imagine... Like being on that set, it was just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, in in a dark way, in a very dark and dark and, and and depressing way. But it was just absolutely gorgeous. But the main character doesn't have any lines; she's a mute, so she doesn't speak. But she is so expressive, and she does such a good job of expressing herself and showing what she's feeling through her body language, through her facial um, tics, and and what you, what have you. So those are the challenging roles. So that's a, Helsinger is challenging in that sense. Like, you know, can't just can't just stand there and just do that. It doesn't work uh, unless you're comatose. So it, it you need to you need to lace it with different elements of the human existence so that it actually makes sense to people and they can connect to it. Um, and those roles are rewarding. They're very rewarding. I mean, it's great to have a lot of lines because everyone likes to you know see you talk and see your face move and all that stuff, but um, those roles are pretty cool. They're pretty challenging. Yeah, definitely. Uh, outside of acting, you also own the restaurant or the pop shop. What was it that made you want to own a restaurant? Oh, sheer insanity, man. Sheer insanity. My ex-wife and I had a moment of 
of you know pure insanity and we were like hey let's open a restaurant we um my ex-wife who is the mother of my children um we're still partners in the restaurant we're still very good friends and we were at this time we had our 16 year old was two and she had a food background she had gone to school for hotel and restaurant management and and cooking and all that stuff i was a football player transforming into an actor i had no experience in the restaurant world per se except that i like to eat an awful lot and we took our two-year-old out and we'd always played around with this idea like if we ever had a restaurant what would we do so we would always throw like these different ideas at each other and this one instance this one evening we had our two-year-old out at this really like low-end pizzeria that put tablecloths on at night and pretended that they were like a, a higher end restaurant. And our kid was like throwing crayons and he's like making noise and people were like giving us dirty looks to the point where we actually grabbed our food, wrapped it up and we left halfway through our meal. And we were frustrated and we were sitting in our car and we were saying, this is ridiculous. Why isn't there a family restaurant in this town where you can go and bring your kids and kids can be loud and they can be themselves and you can grab a hamburger and a milkshake and fries. Like, why is there nothing like that in this town? So that's basically the catalyst that, that drove us to start the process of opening the restaurant. And we said, like, we'll just keep because we didn't know anything about it. And we just we'll just keep going until somebody says stop. You know, whether the bank says no or we can't find the location or the name that we wanted is already taken. You know what I mean? Like all these different elements. We we're giving ourselves all these outs. However, we could demand it. We want an out. We want someone to say no. And everything fell into place. It was like the right time, the right place. And um, I think we're 13 years old now. And we have two locations. We have a food truck. Um, it, you know, we're very lucky. Very lucky. We have a lot of great staff that um, works very hard for us and keeps the Pop Shop brand and the Pop Shop way of life intact day in, day out. So without those folks, uh, we, we don't have a restaurant. So it, those are the those are the true heroes. My my ex and I were just you know we're the idea guys. Yeah, it's really fantastic though. Uh, my final question for you, Stink: Do you have any upcoming acting roles or any other projects that you would like to talk about? Uh, yeah, I mean I have um I have a couple things coming out in 2018 which I'm excited about. One is Crossbreed. Uh, it, it is a sci-fi film that we shot in Buffalo, New York. And uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm not actually the lead. I'm like the star of the film, which is crazy, like top billing. Uh, my first one, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like a journeyman. And I've been, you know, supporting lead and, you know, best friend and, and all that stuff. But this one, I was like, I'm like the lead guy. I'm like, my name comes up first, uh, I guess, in the uh, in the credits or however that works. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm like, I'm not, a, I'm not immersed in this. So all this stuff kind of like when it happens to me, I'm kind of like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. I get kind of geeked up about it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's pretty neat for me. Um, so that's really cool. That's called Crossbreed. That should be out um, at some point in, I'd say, early spring of 2018, maybe even late winter. And um, I shot Detective Chinatown 2. Detective Chinatown, from what I understand, was the number one grossing comedy in China last year. Year, or in 2016, it did like $500 million. And Detective Chinatown 2 is supposedly going to be even a bigger hit. And I have a little little role in there, but it's really cool, really funny. And um, thoroughly enjoyed myself with that. That was a crazy situation with um, an all Chinese speaking crew, Chinese director, interpreters on set, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of uh, very interesting scenarios that you just, you know, you have to just kind of get used to it and just kind of feel your way around, which is really cool. Uh, different experience. And I have a TV show that I'm doing called Old Dogs New Tricks. Um, we're in the fourth episode. We're shooting the, shooting the fourth episode. We're currently looking for a, a home base for that. So we're looking, we're shopping that around the networks. Uh, but I'm very excited about that. I have a major role in that. I'll be in like every episode. My character is in every episode. Um, and I have a three year arc, which is really cool. So that could be work for a while. And, and I love the character. The character is an absolute uh, hilarious maniac, which is fun for me. Because I usually play the big guy. I usually play Aaron Helsinger. I play the guy that's going to strangle you and, and step on your face. So when I get to do somebody that's fun and, and actually can make you laugh, I mean, that's, 
fantastic. Uh, so I have that going on. I have three films that I'm connected to right now that are waiting for the green light. So as soon as they get that, I'll be scheduled in and I'll know when I'm working on those. But I think they should probably be closer to the summer, if not in the summer. One's going to be definitely in the summer. The other one could be as early as April. And um, the other one I don't know. I have no information about other than uh, I know that I'm attached in some way, shape or form. Really cool. You've definitely got a lot on your plate at the moment. In any case, I, th I don't know. I think so. I'd like to be busier. I, I think everybody wants to be busier, but I'm, I think I'm very fortunate, and I'm, I'm very happy for what I have, and I'm looking forward to the future, man. I think that uh, I have longevity in the business, and I think that uh, you know I'm just going to get better with with age, and I think the roles will open up more to me as I get older because you know I just I won't necessarily be that hulking disaster anymore and i'll be able to come in and be the nice the nice guy the dad you know who knows we'll see <laughs> yeah we'll see indeed um that's all of my questions for you today stink it's been a pleasure talking to you on the show today uh roy it's been a blast i really appreciate it and i, I hope that your fans enjoyed the interview and i i hope that everyone has a great 2018 um we, you know don't don't hold trump against us please yeah. we're uh <laughs> we're good people over here trust me <laughs> yeah i'm making no promises <laughs> yeah, no, I, hear, I hear you man i hear you <laughs> um well it's been great talking to you on the show today and hopefully we can talk to you again sometime yes definitely can you stay in touch whenever you'd like I, i'd love to come on and, and I, i'll tell you what i will get in touch with you if i find out that i'm going back on gotham i'll get in touch with you and i'll let you know yeah definitely be sure to do so and Thanks again for joining us today, and take care. Bye. Dude, it's my pleasure. Bye-bye. Time to wrap up today's show. Make sure to check out our podcast links. Check out our website, website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.facebook.com youtube.com slash user slash everything geek cast check us out on twitter twitter.com slash everything geek p check us out on instagram instagram.com slash official everything geek podcast check out our mixcloud profile www.mixcloud.com slash everything geek podcast email us at the following email everything geek podcast at gmail.com Check out our companion podcast, Everything Geek Comic Cast, www.facebook.com slash Everything Geek Comic Cast. Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash Septus Destroyers. Check out Stink Fisher on Twitter, twitter.com slash Stink, And check out channel 1138, where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com Geeks out, everyone. Well, I'm personally, you know, Scarecrow always was one of my uh, uh, um, favorite characters. But again, you know, Gotham is a, the, the, the premise for Gotham is about a city that molds pe ordinary people or, or ordinary people to becoming extraordinary. This season, people. okay. You won't see him again. All right. Well, whoops. About four episodes later. Oh, hello popped up again and that's how it went for the first half of the season and um any episodes that i wasn't in